Hello YouTube Nation, this is Mr. Bone, 66 Crush. Uh, today I'm going to actually do something kind of cool. I'm going to tell you how I got into one of my my favorite band of all time, Pink Floyd. Uh, it's an interesting story and it kind of culminates, you know, here and there, but it's it, it's a really good story and I, I want to share it with you. Uh, Back in 1987, Pink Floyd had put out this album called The Momentary Lapse of Reason, and they actually toured on it. Uh, and I was not a big fan of Pink Floyd back then. Okay, I had to preface to say that. Uh, in fact, it took me a few years till this actually kicked in. But I had this one girl in my high school. Her name was Monica uh, Stahlbomber. And she... She started getting into this band called Pink Floyd with her cousin, uh, uh, with her cousin, uh, Shirley Stahlbomber. And I just thought it was kind of cute that they were into this band with a cute little name, Pink Floyd. Okay, that's kind of cool. So a couple years later, I'm living in Atchison, Kansas, and I'm actually going to uh, school there. And I actually ran into these people. And I guess this uh, gentleman liked Pink Floyd and he liked the Wall album. So I saw the Wall album and I'm just like, oh, that sounds okay. I like it. Nah, okay, you know. I was kind of hesitant on it, you know, because it did have a boring album cover with the bricks on it, you know. So I wasn't quite ready yet. Okay, this is the day that changed everything. August of... 1991 there was a pink floyd aka with led zeppelin light laser light show at you know the down to peak of kansas so i asked my grandparents if i could go down there for that deal and they said yeah sure heck go ahead you know we're we're all right here you know so my brothers wanted to go along too so we went along and we did all sorts of stuff that day we went you know mauling which is you know going to the malls and had a bite to eat, then we went to this deal. So I sat down, and I started, you know, they had all the freaking lights shut down, they had all the laser cannons all ready to go, you know, you can see them kind of like this. So they started playing Pink Floyd first, and they had about an hour and 15 minutes worth of Pink Floyd music. And, okay, the first thing that got me was, okay, this music actually syncs really, really good with a light show there's some sort of artifact to it okay so that kind of grabbed me right there i'm just like wow okay this is cool this is you know there's it, it, it sounded good you know and i'm just like okay so one or two songs go by and i'm starting to get slowly hooked into this pink floyd deal and then all of a sudden about the third or the fourth song i Stop kind of really watching what was going on laser wise and I actually figured out, well, I can actually hear what these lyrics are. So I started actually listening to some of these lyrics. And for the first time, I'm going, oh, well, there's a little bit of humanity in these lyrics. They're talking about humanized things. There's a little bit of thought process going on inside my mind right now, thinking about their lyrics. And I just kept listening to it and kept listening to it. And of course, the, the, the laser light show still is pretty awesome too, you know. But the more I got into it, the more I was actually getting into this thought deal of what Pink Floyd were doing thought-wise, you know. How it affected me mentally and how it affected me a little bit on the on the heartstrings and the, the, the spiritual thing. So I walked out of that experience. And of course, they had Led Zeppelin uh their stuff was really, really good. I mean, I may, you know, at the time I was a big Led Zeppelin fan. And don't get me wrong, I still think they are a good band and everything. But I walked out of that experience having a newfound, odd fascination for this new band that I discovered. Pink Floyd. Wow. This is, this is kind of cool. So... I kind of set out in earnest, uh, kind of wanted to figure out what this band was like, and I kind of had, you know, figured out that they were doing some things, you know. They had this live album that they put out after the Momentary Lapse of Reason tour uh, was done, and 
what they did on that is actually put on on VHS. So I bought the VHS copy and I'm thinking to myself, wow, they actually have some really good visuals to go with their music and the music's really good. Really, really good, you know. So I'm all excited about all this. And, and of course, they had this uh, uh, box set that they had put out just a year after I saw them at, at this laser light deal. It's called Shine On. And this had, you know, I think Adam Hart Mother was in it. I know uh, Metal was in it. Of course, you know, you have the big quad of albums, you know, momentary, I mean, uh, you had the big quad albums of uh, Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, and of course, The Wall. That's killer albums, one right after the other right now. So I started listening to that, and I'm just like, oh, well, w whoa, everything just started changing because all of a sudden you realize that they had themes in their albums and and, and and all the artwork was kind of adding to those themes and it just kept building up and kept building up and all of a sudden you listen to their music you're like oh yeah yeah so that was in about 1992 or 93 when I was really really big into them you know uh got into all their stuff I mean I was listening to everything I mean there was maybe like one or two albums that I probably didn't have back then so 1994 rolls around and of course they announced that they're going to go do this uh tour for their upcoming album called the vision bell now you'll have to forgive me uh everybody kind of thinks the vision bell is not their greatest album i might have to agree with you but i might have to disagree for me it's a personally great album because i actually got to see the tour that that album was in support of. So, you know, without the Division Bell, I don't have no tour to go see. So, I have that to thank for immensely. So, it kind of puts it up there in the echelon of Pink Floyd albums for me. Okay? So, anyway, getting back to the, you know, announcement. They, they decided they were going to go back out on tour again in 1994. And one of the days that they actually had in this tour uh, itinerary was Kansas City. Oh, God, I'm like, I'm excited. So I'm getting all, you know, everything, and I'm getting all ready to go. And I decided I was going to uh, camp out for tickets, you know, in, in St. Joe, Missouri, so I can actually get really good seats. Well, I did. I got tickets within about the first 16, 20 rows, dead center, you know, and that show was fantastic. The staging was just absolutely awesome over the top i mean you know you had this hugely arched deal like the hollywood bowl i mean it was fantastic you know just the staging then all of a sudden they went up there and they played with this staging and i'm just like oh well now you guys are actually bringing the wow factor because now you're putting your own music above this freaking staging and actually projecting it out there and everything and i was like all excited you know because i knew all the songs that they were playing i even knew quite a bit of stuff off the new album division bell i knew all the stuff off of momentary lapse of reason i knew most of the stuff off, i knew everything off the wall the, the you know the animals they didn't play anything off the animals of course i knew all the dark side stuff i knew all the rich you hear stuff so i was pretty well set for the whole entire night to know pretty much everything i was seeing and I love that whole entire show. And ever since then, I just kind of put Pink Floyd as kind of an echelon. I mean, I, they just rapidly became my favorite band. And of course, I'm into other stuff like metal. I'm into some pop, some country. But Pink Floyd have always kind of been up, up here, you know. And it was a long time before I actually had another band to actually kind of say, okay, this is another good band that I like. I kind of got into Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers shortly after I was a Pink Floyd fan. He was kind of that Scott gap between Pink Floyd and, you know, for me, because he was still putting out material and going on tour, and I don't want to get into his stuff too much. That's for another deal. But it just blossomed up from there for the Pink Floyd stuff, and I just love Pink Floyd just because there was just so much humanity and it actually, when you listen to Pink Floyd, it actually forces you, in a way, 
to actually examine your own humanity and say, oh, I think I can improve on some things here. So that's basically how I got into Pink Floyd. Uh, and I had this other video I put on today. So I hope you enjoy both videos. And I'm going to sign off for now. And all you crazy diamonds, shine on.